all right if you are just joining us sir uh, you are on the platform uh we see arranging the files meet the marriage counselor and the relationship coordinator your regular host i'm on board remember i told you uh when it's 3 p.m on the door you give a shout we welcome your files and you know we actually hit our heads together so that we come out with a solution for somebody who is troubled out there. And so good afternoon, Bafusam. Good afternoon, lovers of NGTV. Good afternoon, the population of the West region. Good afternoon, all those who are faithful viewers of this program. Uh, meet the marriage counselor and the relationship coordinator, Angel in Bamenda. I've not forgotten you. Uh, Brian in uh, Bafusam, you're out there. I give you a big shout out. And all who are connected right now to take part in this program, good afternoon. We are so glad we are embracing the, the dry season here in Bafusam. Uh, so if you're coming into town, come on, you can put on your spaghetti words, and you know, <laughs> it's quite uh, hot now. Gone are the rains, you understand that? You know, you must keep guard against your health so that you don't break down. That's why we're here. And so it's quite hot in Bafusam. We are glad to harbor you all again on the platform. I got a special one for you today, and I got a special somebody you all like again on the platform, you know. I'm not going to let the cat out of the back, you understand? <laughs> Ancien Musa is on the keys, manipulating the over 1,000 buttons. And so when it's Ancien Musa, oh, what a smile I put on. Angel, are you there? Sure, I welcome your opinion on the platform today. And so we are live from the enclosed agricultural land basin of the West region, Chief Town Bafusam. All those who are Karifu Chang, who are at uh, the uh, Buddha, you know, all those uh, connecting villages, you know, around the West region, we give you a big shout out from this plateau. We're glad to be with you all again. Okay, I want to introduce to you what we are having in the platform today. But before we come there, let's have the transition that will introduce us to the panelist slash topic. And we'll be right back. Over to you and then a little transition. <laughs> You, sir. Okay, I will put in the file. Okay. Sure, you want to know who is the expert on board who is riding the train this afternoon? Oh, what a sound. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm saying you, sir. Oh, my God. After this, come for a bottle. <laughs> For a cool bottle. All right, we have no other person that a famous uh, certified, world recognized academically, uh, nationally, internationally, counselor, you know, no other person than counselor Caroline Kwam. I'm so glad to have her because she's actually an expert in the domain. I wish I could have her every day. What about you, viewers? When it's her, I put on a big smile on this jaws. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome counselor Caroline Kwam on this plateau we're glad to have her welcome counselor caroline kwam thank you betty <laughs> i'm very grateful for all you are saying concerning me uh, it's of course it's huge. the truth <laughs> thank you very much okay um today i'm happy to be here thank you very much uh viewers before she continues i want to say she looks so flamboyant this afternoon <laughs> <laughs> the hair from the hair to you are really a marriage counselor you look so so expensive. <laughs> Thank you, Betty. <laughs> I'm also very happy. As okay. you all know, I'm a marital and family counselor, specialized in premarital counseling and marital counseling. For those for francophones, uh, je vous salue tous. Je suis votre conseillère conjugale et familiale, spécialisée dans le conseil conjugal pour les couples et pour les célibataires également. Aujourd'hui, nous avons un thème vraiment très important et je suis très contente que NGT me donne l'opportunité d'en débattre. Je profite pour saluer tous ceux qui sont en train de me regarder, tous les téléspectateurs qui m'ont regardé la semaine passée et qui sont encore en train de me regarder. Et je fais un coucou spécial à ma famille, à mon mari et à mes charmants enfants qui sont devant la télé maintenant. <rire> Excellent, you hear her talk like the marriage counselor she is indeed. And so we are glad to have her here. Okay, number is being displayed uh, in front of your screen, you know. 
Uh, this is the number uh, we having right now. I'm saying you, sir. 676. Yes, we got that. Let's actually verify the number. 676. Uh, 176. 176. 503. I'm you, sir. Le de, uh, le de five zero three five zero three. You got it? Five zero three. Five zero three. So you remove four nine five and we have five zero three. Are we there? Okay, that's the number you're gonna get us this afternoon. Six seven six one seven six five. Ce n'est pas quatre five. Zero three. That's the number you're gonna have us this afternoon. Okay, we wanna unveil to you the topical issue we're handling on the platform. You can see how uh, saturated the table is this afternoon. It's an indication that the file is equally saturated. We wanna read it live to our viewers out there. You actually got what came in this week. We have some other pertinent files. Remember, this platform is for all marriage people out there. Uh, married people out there, those who are doing cohabitation, what we normally call in a, a local palace, uh, come we stay, you understand, yeah. And those who do um, <laughs> what <laughs> what we say in the country, when you're living with a woman is over three or six months, the, 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 per the woman automatically becomes your wife. <laughs> I tell you what, by the time you feel the pains of that thin man, <laughs> you not encourage somebody to live with a girl in the house when the person is not married to that girl. And so that's the essence of this program, need the marriage counselor and the relationship coordinator. We have pertinent files on the table. We'll come to them. Please keep sending your, your, your worries. And we trust the expertise of our counselor here to handle the situation because she is uh, actually trained and marital issues like you heard her talk she's trained on free marital counseling and marital counseling as well and even social happenings that has to do with relationships cohabitation and other social issues you know especially those ones plaguing the 21st generation you can call it android generation all right this is the file we have today dear viewers hello greetings to you i am heartbroken hmm. that is why i am writing to you this letter to actually explain my problem and get uh, your advice as experts. Get your advice as experts. I am the first daughter of my late father. My mother passed away when I was a kid. Then my father got married to another woman. They now have three children. My father virtually passed away a couple of months back. He was shot dead inside his own house. <laughs> But God so kind, the day he died, I was on the phone with my father. While I was conversing with my father, he said, let him go and check the door. As he went, he never came back to the phone. That was the last time I ever spoke to my father. Hope you're paying attention out there. What, is sh what shocked me and every family member was that the next day after his death, my stepmom, who was out of the country, also called me and told me your father has been shot dead by thieves. After we spoke like that, she, broke, uh, she booked the next flight back to Cameroon two days after I too arrived Cameroon. She immediately ordered that my dad be buried immediately. Hmm. Then my dad's family protested that they cannot bury their son like a common man. So he was forced to, he was forced to stay in the mortuary for one week. But before even he was buried, my stepmom seized all my father's assets, including his cars, sold them, and immediately after burial, the family only discovered that my stepmom had disappeared with her children back to abroad. When they decided to call for a family meeting after the family meeting two weeks after i to travel back to europe what is paining me is the fact that immediately i, I arrived uh, abroad i decided to pay some secret investigators to check on my stepmom and two weeks after this was the result we got dear counselors
<laughs> you will be shocked to realize that this woman actually hired assassins, that is uh, murderers, killers. <laughs> assassins to assassinate my father so that she could inherit all his wealth, then go join her boyfriend abroad. That she had been keeping ever since my dad was alive. Right now, the two of them are squandering my father's wealth. Please tell me what to do with this kind of stepmother. <laughs> right now, I am confused and don't know what to do. Even if I follow justice and legal procedures, what will they do to her? Will my father come back or should I take justice into my hands? Really confused right now and in a deep pain because I loved my father, my late father, so much. He was a good man. <sighs> this is a four paragraph writing from somebody who is actually heartbroken. The writer did not give us her name, no problem. But if you are out there following, that's the essence. And if you go and take the advice from the counselor this afternoon, that is the essence of this program. And that's the objective of NGTV, that you out there actually be satisfied and saved your marriages or saved your relationship or saved your families. You understand? No um, marriages, no families, no society, no nation. And so if you want a nation to move well, you begin with marriages. Because when you tackle marriages, you actually tackle families. From families, you move to the communities. From the community, the whole village, the whole region, the whole nation is world. And so marriages are the target to a great nation. You understand? So it's not important if the writer did not give the name, but it's good when you give your name because it's your story. You are not alone. There are many like you out there. Please, that's the file. I want to summarize it again. This writer is actually writing that she is heartbroken. What happened? Mm, the father got married to a second mother after her own mother died when she was younger. And so they grew up with a stepmom. She's a big girl now. She's out of the country. The stepmom is also out of the country. But what happened? The father was killed, you know, in a mystical way inside his own home in the late hours of the night. Uh, God being so kind, the day he was killed, this girl was actually on phone with the dad, you understand? And he was like, somebody is knocking at the door, let me go check. I'm sure those were the assassins that were hired to kill him. And when the father went to the door to check who was behold, this girl, the father never came back to the phone. And the next thing she got the next morning was a call from the stepmom, your father is dead, has been shot dead by uh, assassins. And then the two days after she got the message, the, the stepmom traveled to Cameroon. And she too, I think uh, one week after or a few days after, she too traveled to Cameroon. And so immediately the stepmom arrived to Cameroon, the first thing she did was to remove all the documents that belongs to the father, all the assets of the father, uh, the company documents and many more, including the cars. And they only realized that she sold them before traveling back to uh, abroad after the burial. But what shocked the family was the fact that immediately the stepmom arrived at Cameroon, she was like, let's bury him, let's bury him, let's bury him. Somebody was dead. He died today, two days after you are in Cameroon, meaning that three days after you arrived, you were like, let's bury him the next day. Suspicious indeed. And so the family was like, no, we can't bury our son like a commoner. Let's keep him in the mortuary for one week. And so one week after, this gentleman was buried. And so the pain is the action of this stem mom made the family members were skeptical, you understand? And even this girl was skeptical, uh, skeptical about the attitude of the mom, the stem mom. And so back there in abroad, she had to hire investigators, that secret investigators, to actually investigate this stem mom. And her main aim was to actually find out what she has done with the father's asset, without her knowledge and even the knowledge of every other family member, you understand? To her greatest uh, surprise, is for the investigators to come back with this result that this woman has actually sold all the assets of the late father and is squandering the money with the boyfriend, the present boyfriend that uh, she had been keeping even before the death of her father. <laughs> Um, 
It's not all about please forgive. It's easy to say. It's hard to do. Anyway, I think I'm tired of talking. I'm going to leave that for the counselor right now. That's the topical issue we are harboring on the platform today. Quite complicated. I am lost. I don't know what to say. So, the number in front of your screen, you can send us your text messages. Or why not call on what you think? I hand over the mic to counselor Caroline from that is the hey i can call it a heavy file this afternoon <laughs> sure you got something on that for our dear viewers and this heartbroken lady whom we don't know <laughs> a sacred writer no problem we are grateful that you actually wrote to this platform okay <laughs> thank you very much uh, i have many things to tell her I will explain the problem in French so that our parents will hear. Il s'agit ici précisément d'une fille qui a perdu son père. En fait, elle a perdu son père. Elle est vraiment abattue par rapport à la situation. Elle raconte son histoire. Et son père était marié avec une femme dans le passé. Donc, étant jeune, elle, son père était marié avec sa mère. Sa mère est morte et il s'est remarié à une femme. Et avec cette femme-là, ils ont fait trois enfants ensemble. Donc, après avoir fait ces trois enfants ensemble, ils étaient ensemble, sans problème. Et un beau matin, euh, son père est au Cameroun, elle était aux États-Unis. Son père l'appelle au téléphone, elle prend le téléphone et elle cause avec son père. Après, son père lui dit « j'arrive ». Elle veut encore causer avec son père, elle constate seulement qu'elle ne peut plus causer avec lui. C'était comme ça les bandits qui assassinaient son père. Maintenant, le problème est que après que son père soit mort, cette femme qui est à la maison, a donc, est arrivée au Cameroun pour l'enterrement de son père. Elle a commencé à précipiter les choses, à enterrer le rapidement, à enterrer le rapidement. Les gens ont dit non, on ne peut pas l'enterrer rapidement parce qu'il est, il est quand même important, c'est quand même notre frère et tout. Donc c'est ce que la famille de la fille a dit. L'enterrement a finalement eu lieu et à peine avoir fait l'enterrement, elle a commencé à bousiller les biens de cet homme, elle a commencé à vendre sa voiture, vendre ses biens, elle est rentrée au, aux états unis et donc cette fille étant abattue, deux semaines après l'enterrement, rentre aussi aux états unis et elle paye dans les investigateurs pour vérifier vraiment qu'est-ce qui se passe, elle voulait rentrer en possession de ses biens beaucoup plus et elle se rend compte que cette femme en question, c'est-à-dire la femme qui était mariée à son père, a payé les gens pour que les gens assassinent son père, afin qu'elle puisse jouer la vie, comme vous entendez, manger la vie, comme vous entendez, avec son petit ami, avec son gars, avec son amant. Et elle, elle s'est rendue compte qu'actuellement, ou à l'heure où nous parlons, cette femme est en train de passer du beau temps avec son amant et en train de bousiller comme ça les biens de son père. Et elle vient donc sur cette table pour demander le secours, pour demander l'aide. Elle est abattue. Qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire? Est-ce que je dois aller en justice? Est-ce que la justice même va faire en sorte que mon père revienne en vie? Aidez-moi, je suis dépassée. Qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire de ce genre de femme? Donc, elle vient demander l'aide. Et je vais donc lui apporter mon aide. À la fin, je vais essayer de récapituler l'aide en anglais, peut-être en anglophone. Donc, euh, déjà, j'espère que tu es en train de m'écouter. Première recommandation, j'aimerais lui dire que il faut qu'elle signale aux membres de la famille qu'elle a les preuves que cette femme-là a payé les gens pour que son père soit assassiné. Puisqu'elle a les investigateurs, ça veut dire que s'ils ont investigué, ça veut dire qu'ils ont suffisamment de preuves. Donc, je, 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 je l'encourage à prendre ces preuves-là, aller voir les membres de la famille pour qu'on porte plainte à cette femme et que justice soit faite. Pourquoi je le dis Parce que ce genre de personne est dangereuse pour la société. Ce genre de personne est une criminelle et elle est très dangereuse pour la société et c'est même une criminelle et on ne sait pas si c'est même elle qui était à l'origine même de la mort de sa mère dans le passé pour entrer dans le foyer et si on laisse ce genre de cas, demain elle va encore assassiner celui-ci oui, ou un autre homme. That's Donc it. il faut d'abord porter plainte pour que justice soit faite parce qu'elle est dangereuse pour la société. That's Ça c'est la première chose. Deuxièmement, en ce qui concerne les biens, j'aimerais bien que les gens comprennent ceci. Selon le Code civil camerounais, lorsque tu as participé d'une façon ou d'une autre au décès de, de, du défunt, ça veut dire que si ta main, si tu connais quelque chose, bien si tu as comploté 
pour que le, le, le mari, ton conjoint, décède afin d'éviter ses biens, tu es immédiatement écarté de la succession. C'est une loi. Donc, normalement, elle doit être écartée de la succession. Donc, elle doit donc prendre cette preuve-là. Elle part euh, à, dans, à la justice avec cette preuve. Elle rencontre un avocat. Et cette femme sera écartée de la succession. Et ce qu'on qu va faire, c'est qu'on va saisir les biens entre les mains de cette femme et procéder à la repartition. Dans ce cas, on se rend compte qu'il est mort brusquement. Ça veut dire qu'il n'avait pas laissé de testament. Perfect. Mais ce qui est bien avec la loi, c'est que tout a été prévu. On a pensé à tout ça. Donc, la loi camerounaise a prévu les cas dans lesquels quelqu'un meurt sans laisser le testament et le notaire procède à la répartition des biens en fonction du statut de chacun. Ça veut dire qu'elle, en tant qu'enfant, elle doit hériter, elle a sa part de yes. Mais cette femme, normalement, elle devait aussi hériter, et hériter même pour ses enfants. Mais comme elle a participé au décès, elle n'hérite plus, elle est écartée de la succession. Donc, voilà une autre action qu'ils doivent entreprendre. Et la... Et, elle doit entreprendre cette action parce qu'il est important pour elle de récupérer ses biens. Cette femme-là est en train de bousiller ses biens. Et si on tarde, ça doit être très rapide. C'est une urgence. Parce que si on tarde, elle va se rendre compte qu'à la fin, quand on va la voir, on va la mettre en prison. Mais ces biens-là, on ne les aura plus. Peut-être que cette arme est en train d'utiliser. Donc, il faut vite faire. Et j'aimerais la conseiller personnellement de vraiment pour son développement personnel parce que cette situation est traumatisante et elle peut même sombrer dans la dépression parce que quand je suis l'histoire elle a d'abord perdu sa mère et aujourd'hui elle devient orpheline de père et de mère donc il faut quelqu'un qui va l'aider à retrouver confiance en elle à regagner le goût à la vie parce que où elle est, elle est blessée émotionnellement donc je la conseillerais de chercher euh, soit si elle est chrétienne un homme de Dieu qui pourra la guérir avec la parole de Dieu qui pourra l'aider, ou alors un psychologue si elle n'est pas chrétienne, ça dépend de ses croyances. Mais toujours est-il qu'elle doit se faire aider, ne pas se remonter dans la situation. Les conseillers conjugaux aussi sont compétents pour remonter les gens dans ce genre de cas. Elle a besoin d'être remontée. Et surtout, j'aimerais qu'elle comprenne ceci, elle ne doit pas se vendre. Elle ne doit pas mettre la haine dans le cœur contre cette femme. Elle ne doit pas penser que peut-être, parce qu'il y a certains enfants qui vont aller jusqu'à dire que non, je vais vendre mon père, je vais tuer cette femme. Non, qu'elle laisse la vengeance à Dieu. Mais la justice doit être faite. Ça veut dire que pour porter plainte, là, c'est parce qu'elle doit entrer en possession de ses biens. Et il ne faut pas qu'elle soit aveuglée par l'amour de son père et de tuer ses biens. Parce qu'après l'amour de son père, la vie continue. Elle a besoin de ses biens-là pour refaire sa vie. Donc voilà ce que je peux lui dire. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> dear viewers maybe sure you don't want the counselor to learn please we'll give you time to call the calls are really <laughs> we'll give you time to call i said it i said it was really a complicated one today on the plateau and when we have counselor caroline Kwam, it's actually tough i think that was a beautiful explanation there it's quite clear for someone who is heartbroken like a man uh, this lady, this unknown lady that we don't know, please, uh, just like uh, the first point you made mentioned there, I think I, I admire it a lot when you said this kind of lady is dangerous in the society. In the society. You are very correct. Yes. Because the fact that you could do this kind of thing to your first husband, you can do it to even this petite amie yes. and even the next because you are, you are covetous, you are property hunger. You are a Morgan as far as property is, co is concerned. <laughs> okay, let's actually take this call. <laughs> I think somebody is boiling out there. Normally, we have to give you all uh, time to call. Please, if you are finding difficulties to call, you can text. You understand? You can text us. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, Counselor Caroline, for that beautiful one. The first thing we want to remark here is a dangerous species in the society, <laughs> this kind of lady. And so <laughs> this girl has done a good thing by not taking justice into her hands. That's the first one. And just like you're saying, that maybe she should, she should begin with the family. Yes. yes. With the family. Let's, let them reason it together. If the family says, let's let sleeping dogs lie better. If the family, because she alone cannot fight the fight. She's also risking her own life. Yes. She alone cannot fight that fight. 
I'm sure our English population want to benefit also from that beautiful explanation there. Let's give them a chance also. Mm -hmm. Yes, what I was trying to explain, I'm a French speaker, but I try for Angopons. What I was saying is that the first thing this lady have to do is that she should report with the family, as you said, because alone she, 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 she cannot, she should meet the family with all proof that she have, and then together they will report to the police because this type of woman is a dangerous person in the society. Who knows, tomorrow maybe she will kill her. That, this other one. This other one. Who knows if she's not the one who even kills the, <laughs> the, the mother of this girl. So That's she's it. Dangerous. Do you, are you understanding? <laughs> That's the first thing. Now the second point concerning uh, words, as she has started to use everything, to use the boot, to use the car, the money, and so on, I will advise this girl to go again to the justice with the proof, with the family, and explain to them that this woman has started to use the goods of their father. Now, Cameroon civil courts have explained it, have everything, you see. So concerning, according to Cameroon civil court, if they discover that you have your hand on the death on somebody, that you kill him because you wanted to inherit, you will just be put aside, you see. Mm -hmm. So she don't even have the right to inherit. She's in the wrong position where she is. So I think uh, it is urgent that the police or I don't know, the justice do their work and take the goods in their hands. That's the second point. The third point is that as she is half broken, she's half broken, she's suffering, and in this type of in this type of problem, now she's even orphaned. So it is important for her to meet somebody who will help her, help her to take care of her again, to have confidence on her again. Because she can even go to depression like that. She can even fall in sick because of this problem. So she should meet a, somebody, maybe a pastor who will tell her. You are yeah, getting me. And the last thing is that she should not take vengeance for her. She should not say that, no, I will kill that woman, I will do this. Oh my God, let's actually take this person who is really, oh my. Oh, we having some difficulties here. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, oh. Hello. Yes, I'm just going to make me to understand the program. Okay. Yes, please. You want a recap of what's happening? <laughs> okay, this... Um, call this caller is actually saying that he, he wants to understand the program. He's just tuning in. Okay, thank you so much. If you really want to understand it, we have a file this day on Meet the Marriage Counselor and the Relationship Coordinator. And this is the file. This girl is a big girl, the first daughter of the father. The mother died when she was a little girl. You understand? And then... Uh, after that, the, far, the father got married to another wife. They have three children, meaning that she has three uh, uh, siblings, you understand. She's out of the country, and so the stepmom was also out of the country. But recently, the father was shot dead in the house. Hello? 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 Yes, please. Yes, please. Hello. <laughs> okay, I think it's quite saturated today, <laughs> Councillor Caroline Cram. You're doing a good job. <laughs> okay, uh, so for on behalf of the person who called, and so the stepmom and this girl were out of the country, separate, separate countries. You understand? And so recently, just few months back, eh, she was on phone with the father, and. All of a sudden, that's late in the night, the father told her, somebody is knocking at the door, let me go check. And the father went to check, that was all. He never came back to the phone. What happened? He was shot dead by assassins. So, a few days after the stepmom, that's the next day, the stepmom called her and told her, your father's been shot dead by 
uh, assassins. And the next day she was in Cameroon. So two days after she took him to Cameroon. But before she arrived in Cameroon, she realized the stepmother has seized all the assets of the father, everything, the property, including cars. She never knew where those assets were. And so immediately she came, that was three days after the man died, four days after the stepmother was in insisting that they bury the father, they bury. And the family was like, no, we can't bury our son like a thief or a commoner. And so the man was kept in the mortuary for one week. After that, he was buried. So the after burial, you know, there's normally family meeting. The family wanted to sit only for them to realize the stepmom had left with the children back abroad. And all the assets nowhere to be found. So one week after, she too left uh, for abroad. And so the behavior of uh, the stepmom was quite strange, you understand. So because of that, she had to hire secret investigators. You know how the white men, they do the, the thing. They're so advanced as far as technology is concerned. One week after, they discovered that she had sold all the assets and she was she is busy, as we are talking right now, squandering the money with her boyfriend that she had been keeping ever since the father was alive, even they never knew. They, in the course of this investigat uh, investigation, they discovered, if you understand viewers, you know, that's how they do it out there abroad. And so her worry is, what do I do with this kind of stem more? Should I take justice into my hands? Or should I actually follow legal procedures? What do I do because I'm confused right now? And from what we're getting from the counselor on the platform, dear listeners uh, and viewers, she is telling us uh, uh, this kind of human beings are quite dangerous species in the society. If she can kill a man for property, the one that is there now can equally be killed. It is better she be dealt with, you understand? Let justice be mended. That is the far... Uh, our faithful caller we are handling today on the platform. While we keep entertaining your messages, please, you can send messages if you're finding difficulties with calls, because I really see the calls today are really too much. And so it's really difficult for us to really pick them up. I prefer you send text messages. I come back to you, counsel. I want to say that's a beautiful one. The explanation you give first, the fight is too much for this girl. Mm -hmm. Let her start by informing the family I got proof. You yes. understand? Mm -hmm. From the family angle now, they can actually sit and see what to do. As a family, they can deny, uh, decide whether to let go, uh, let sleeping dogs lie, or to actually, because it's quite painful. Like how she ended the letter here by saying, uh, I loved my dad, my late father so much. He was a good man. Meaning that this man was actually good even to this woman. But why should this woman tend to be this hard-hearted? Uh, wicked to such a man you understand those things will not last mm -hmm. they are just mere shadows mm -hmm. you have children like what we got from here we don't know what will happen tomorrow we don't know if all the other them are girls or uh, even if there's no girl there if they are sons also they will get married to other women and when you do things like that don't you think it's going to play back even your on your children or your generation to come that's true and what i would like to add is that this is a serious case of unfaithfulness of a woman. As I usually say, as a marital counselor, I've discovered that unfaithfulness of a woman is very dangerous. When a man cheats, he will come back and he will, do, he will try and love you again. He will, cheat, he will try and arrange things, but he's cheating. But when a woman cheats, be very, very careful. That's why men should take good care of their wives because if you are at home with a woman who is not with you again and who is going out with another person your life is in danger because a, a woman always cheats with all her heart. heart and that's what happened when women cheat she will cheat and because she loves the man she will just try and kill you because she wants to stay with that man donc c'est ce que je suis en train d'expliquer ça c'est un cas d'infidélité de, de la femme qui est très dangereux. Une, quand une femme trompe vraiment, il faut faire attention. Ah, voilà qui a trompé son mari au point de le tuer pour partir, sortir avec son amant. Et généralement, les femmes trompent avec tout leur cœur. C'est pour ça que les hommes doivent toujours veiller à ce que leurs femmes soient avec eux. Parfois, vous négligez les femmes, vous dites elles supportent, elles supportent. Mais le jour qu'elles décident de sortir, ta vie est en danger. Et nous avons ce cas ici d'un homme qui est mort à cause de l'infidélité de la femme. Maintenant, ce qu'elle a fait, ça, va, ça peut la suivre. Ça peut suivre ses enfants. Mm -hmm. 
Et c'est ce qu'elle ne comprend pas parce que actuellement elle est juste aveuglée par l'amour. Et c'est ça le problème avec les femmes. She has already laid a wrong foundation. A wrong foundation, but she don't know because she has three kids. Yes. Yes, she has three kids. And they will definitely get married. They get married. What will happen? So that's why I'm saying that she's very dangerous to the society. As I'm saying, but as you was you were saying, the family is not obliged to report her to the police or to make sure that she should they should imprison her. But what they have to do urgently is to get back what belongs to them, the words of the husband. They cannot say that, no, we are going to leave that. That woman will use it all. And what are they going to do? So it's very important. Uh, I think I got a little worry. As you are talking, I'm jotting down. Mm -hmm. I got a little worry here. What about men who hang out with such women? Is it that their brains are in their buttocks for them not to understand that this woman did this? Because this man, of course, should know that. Yes. I don't want to say that this man is ignorant. Yes. Maybe who knows you were the instigator that instigated the woman even go kill your husband. There are some men who do that. Uh -huh. What about, because now we are looking at the woman, but you're talking like that, my brain is like, but what about men who do hang out with such women? They too are dangerous. I'm telling you, if you're a friend to a thief, you're automatically a thief as well. An Englishman will always say, show me your friend and I'll tell you who you are. And so what about men? I'm asking the question to you because you're an expert. Men who hang out with such women, <laughs> I yeah. think they are the same. Yeah. Birds of the same, same feathers normally flock together. <laughs> they are the same, as you say. Generally, they are even the one who will push the woman to go and kill her husband. Because we tell him that I love you. I, and at the end, if you wash very well, you will see that he just want the to, to he just want to take his own words and disappear and as well. Disappear because, because they are not even married. They are not married. And you kill your legally married husband. I'm telling you. And I'm not even sure that man really love her. Because if you really love a woman, you will not tell her to kill the father of her children. Because when you love somebody, you love her with all what she has. So that is not even love. He's interested by that word. And that woman is blind by love that's what i can say she's so not a kid she's not a, she's not a kid for me to even accept that she's blind by love i hear people say love is blind <laughs> not this girl no this one is a man <laughs> this this is the highest buffoonery in the highest order buffoonery that can emanate only from the shrine of a village i don't understand uh, maybe I can't understand because I'm not a counselor, I'm just a coordinator. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, men who do hang out with such women, you are also a dangerous species in the society. And so I'll caution today from this far. <clears throat> Before I come back to you, counselor, to actually give a caution to the population, we actually need to caution the population. Out. I think today is more on cautioning the population. We are having some difficulties on tracing our reactions that are coming because of connections right now. But no problem, someday we'll come back to this file, we'll get the reactions of the people. Remember, the files keep turning, you understand? Because even though one person has sent, it is not the, the, the show of one person. There are many others who are going through similar situations, but they don't know what to do. Some even go commit suicide because there was nobody to share your worry with. And so you, you left yourself in the world of isolation, and before you know it, you just put a rope up there and you hang up, you understand. Why? Because you were in your own world. But we are here at NGTV. If you have difficulties facing us, numbers are in front of your screen. You can call. You will actually welcome you here at NGTV. You actually meet counselors here on this platform as well. Meet the marriage counselor and the relationship coordinator. Again, we want to lord the efforts of NG Television for harboring such programs. Meet the marriage counselor and the relationship, uh, relationship coordinator. Bro viewers, it's, it's a rare program. It's difficult to have such programs. And it's difficult, looking at, at our terrain, Cameroon, to have counselors of such magnitudes to be here at this time giving you cautions on such issues. So please make hay while the sun shines. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. You understand? That's the essence of this program. And that's why we are here as NG Television, because you are out there and we know your marital issues and social issues are too much. 
And so, uh, before we actually come back to the counselor to give us a cushion to the many women out there who abandon their, if a man did not uh, love you, the man will not even put that ring and have children with you. And you carry a new son out there that has no focus. Maybe he's even doing hanging packing. You carry a new son and risk the life of, not the life, the future of your children. And, oh my God, this is really heartbroken. I, now I understand why this writer actually said, hello, greetings to you. I am heartbroken. Dear, you are heartbroken indeed. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, if you hear me talk without smiling, or that, you know that it's really hectic, that the, the file is really... Because I'm that one that will always smile, no matter how difficult the situation is. But I realized today I've not smiled. <laughs> Let me try and smile. <laughs> you know, I'm smiling because this is our sacred writer. Please, we don't know your name, but we trust the opinion or the advice of the counselor is going to play a lot. This woman is dangerous. The boyfriend is dangerous in the society. Please put your head with the family. This is not a one-man fight. That's the first important issue. Go meet the family, bring all your proof, and then let the family accompany you in this fight. If not so, your own life is also at stake. Thank you so much, Car uh, Counselor Caroline Kwam. Uh, that's why whenever I call your name, I smile. <laughs> okay, we want to, we will be right back on the plateau. We're having difficulties. We want to take public reactions, but we can't trace our messages today, no problem. And the space, we'll go and take um, a Marita coach. We didn't take them last week. We promised to give you them today. We have the counselor here. She's going to do a little bit of um, uh, expansion on the, the various coaches that will be displayed today. Normally, we have them so many, they will normally take just five because if we want to take all that comes in, we're not going to stop the program today. Over to you, and then let's have um, uh, Marita Coates, and then we'll be right back. have the first marriage uh, marital code or marriage code you may call them displayed to us let's see what we got there the first one and let's have it the first one yes uh, we have a number of them let's actually see what's there I think we have five of them today we can't take all <laughs> there are so many let's see what the first one has for us or what is written there these are marital codes that normally plays on the, the 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 mentality of people. You know, sometimes when you hear the this, the words of others, you are encouraged. You are, you are you are encouraged to move on. Maybe you were downcasted because of your situation. You understand? But when you hear the words of others, <laughs> this one say love is blind, but uh, can we have it up a little? Love is blind, but marriage does what uh marriage come on we can't really see that there okay but marriage restores its sight oh thank you so much and send you sir love is blind but marriage restores its sight this woman was actually oh my god deceived marriage is the one that instead restores the sight i don't know if you understand that viewers love is blind i'll come back to it let's have the second I don't even know what the others say. This one is already taking me aback. Love is blind, but marriage restore its sight. Oh my God. <laughs> marriage is not about age. It's about finding the right person. That's a good one. So then to get married to this kind of wife that will even kill you, get married to a grandmom that will cherish you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm saying you, sir. Uh, let's have the other one displayed to us. The next one displayed to us. Love, oh, why is that one not very clear there? Love, 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 love. Love may be blind, but marriage is a real eye opener. Hey. <laughs> I think, yes, marriage is a real eye opener. It's the same, almost the same way. Love is blind, but marriage restores its sight. Okay, marriage is the real eye opener. Okay, let's have 
the next one. Marriage is when a man loses his bachelor's <laughs> his bachelor's degree and a woman gets her master's degree. <laughs> well, I'm really confused which one to really hit on. Marriage is when a man loses his bachelor's degree and a woman gets her master's degree. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Let's have the last one. <laughs> well, that's a good one there. All right. I'm sure I'll have the last one. Love says, uh, I haven't seen the ugly parts of you and I'm staying. Oh, yeah. Love says, I have seen the ugly parts of you and I am staying. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I'm seeing you, sir. I think three three are making me hey, yeah <laughs> i don't even know the first one this one says i've seen the ugly parts of you but i'm staying oh my god counselor what do you say to that <laughs> i've seen the ugly part of you but i'm staying that's love yes, that's love and it's very true what they're saying this is the when i see this matter come like that they're very important because it explains the phases of marriage. Exactly. At the first stage of marriage, love is blind. Oh, yeah? Yes, at the beginning. Love is blind. You're not seeing what uh, it's ahead. is doing. You don't know what is you ahead. You don't know. Now, at the second stage of the marriage, mm -hmm. marriage will open your eyes. Mo that's it. You see, no. <laughs> then at the last stage now, it is this last one. I have seen the. I have seen, but I accept. accept. Oh my God! That's the three stages of marriage. Oh yeah. So they were very, very important. I like the way you explained it. <laughs> I yes. love is blind. Love is you don't blind. know what is inside the marriage yes. until you get there. Okay. And so when you get there, now that's the real eye opener. Open you up. now know what is. It's it's more than. You are my, the sugar in my tea. Yes. You are the apple of my eyes. <laughs> it is more that you are the air I breathe. Yes. <laughs> it is more that you, <laughs> you are my missing rib. It is more than <laughs> after you is you. <laughs> it is more than you are the airport. You understand? Yes. That's when you start seeing the ugly, the good, and the bad. Mm -hmm. So the eye is open. open. But even though I've seen the ugly, the good, and the bad, I am staying. I'm oh, staying. my That's God. the last stage and the best one. The best one. The couple who have understood mm -hmm. and have at that stage will stay for long. Because difficulties came at the second stage of the marriage when the eyes are open. open. Hey, I don't know. I discovered that well, you are like that. I didn't know you were like that. But when you accept it, Stay for oh my god yes. <laughs> that's a beautiful explanation there again oh please if you were there those were the marital codes we had for you today's a beautiful one. if you need them you can text us we'll keep sending them to you through this medium you know ngtv and through this platform in the marriage counselor and the relationship coordinator i think i'm actually smiling now well i wish the eyes of this lady we're not blind, even inside the marriage, she was still blind <laughs> to the point that she was actually deceived to kill the husband. Oh my God, this one, I don't know what happened. This one was born blind, <laughs> lived blind, and she would die blind <laughs> because she's, I don't know how she can remedy this kind of situation. Okay, we're glad to have this Marita code. Thank you so much, and saying this. I want to say they were wonderful, really wonderful indeed. We are having difficulties to actually open our international correspondences, your messages today because of um, connection problems, but no, don't worry. I think I still enjoy the platform. We will subsequently take your uh, contributions because they greatly count, you understand. Time is against us, no doubt. We've got a few minutes to be with you all. And you understand that if you're just tuning in, remember NGTV, live from the enclaved agricultural landscape of the West region, you understand? Chief Town Bafusam. And no other person on the plateau today than a uh, well-recognized, famous, internationally, nationally certified counselor, Caroline Kwam. I will always say so because she's not this quacks in the cartes, you understand? Or the amateurs in the cartes, but those who, are, who actually 
I mean, she is a specialist in premarital issues and marital issues. And so, please, you can call now. You can call while she's giving us uh, a caution on. We still give have your indications. Okay, let's actually caution the women out there who are actually blind. Even inside the marriage, they are still blind. They don't know that. I have seen the ugly. Maybe this woman saw an ugly in this man. Mm -hmm. She was still to stay there because just from the, that code they say, I have seen the ugly, but I am staying. What word do you have for the many out there who are caught in this trap? You are in your, in the home of your lovely husband, who actually love to put the ring they kept you. You are dying for a new zone out there. Sure, you have an advice for them, and these men also who instigate some of these women to do such crazy things in this society. Okay, thank you very much. Let me explain to francophones also. Pour ceux qui sont en train de nous, de nous écouter ici, oh, j'aimerais vraiment conseiller les femmes qui sont là dehors et qui pensent à tromper leur mari, peut-être parce que il se comporte mal ou pour ceci ou pour cela. On a pris les codes du mariage et on a vu que le mariage avait les étapes. Donc, n'importe comment, au départ, dans le mariage, l'amour est aveugle. Mais dans la deuxième phase du mariage, il y aura les problèmes. C'est pas parce que vous avez les problèmes que tu vas regarder dehors, parce que la solution ne se trouve jamais dehors. Ce que les femmes doivent comprendre, c'est que la femme sage, comme le dit la Bible, bâtit son foyer. Donc, en cas de difficulté, même si ton mari t'a fait quoi, tu peux te lever pour la restauration de ton couple, au moins même pour tes enfants. Donc, la solution n'est pas ailleurs, n'est pas à l'extérieur. Et les femmes doivent faire très attention parce que la femme n'est pas comme l'homme. Lorsque tu vas tromper ton mari une fois en disant que non, c'est juste une fois, tu vas aller avec le cœur et tu ne pourras plus revenir à la maison, même si tu blaguais. Donc, comme on aime souvent le dire communément, ne jouez pas avec le diable. Il est important de dialoguer. Si c'est difficile, rencontre le conseil conjugal, viens sur cette table poser ton problème et nous allons t'aider parce que la solution ne se trouve pas dans l'infidélité. Tes enfants, dans ce genre de cas, peuvent hériter de ce que toi tu as fait. Ils seront traumatisés parce que tu as assassiné leur propre père. Et je dirais toujours que cette femme-ci, ses yeux vont s'ouvrir peut-être après et elle va pleurer parce qu'il n'y a pas quelqu'un qui peut être heureuse dans ce genre de situation. Peut-être là maintenant, elle a l'impression qu'elle est heureuse. Mais à un moment, lorsqu'elle va s'asseoir, puisque tout le monde a une conscience, elle va regretter ce qu'elle a fait. Donc ça ne sert à rien. Et cet homme, ce criminel, j'aimerais qu'il comprenne même que si on fait les investigations et on constate qu'il a poussé cette femme-ci à tuer cet homme, on va aussi l'arrêter. Il fera aussi la prison. Donc pour vous dire, vous les hommes qui sortez avec les femmes mariées, j'appelle ça vraiment une catastrophe. Les femmes sont tellement nombreuses, comme vous aimez si bien le dire. Il faudrait mieux chercher ta propre femme et laisser la femme d'autrui. Parce que la femme d'autrui, je le dirais, est même amère. La femme d'autrui ne t'appartient pas. Donc, faites très attention. Voilà, elle a tué son mari. Peut-être que tu vas te retrouver en prison avec elle. Et ta vie sera comme ça, la finie. Donc, voilà le conseil que je peux dire. English. Dear viewers, as I, I was saying that this woman, this type of woman, are very dangerous. And I advise to all women to remain faithful oh, to yes. their husband. Remain faithful. It's true that marriage is not easy. At a, at the moment, you will have difficulties, you have problems. But I always like to say, a woman, a wise woman, can build her home and efficiently. You can do it. You have the power for that. And if there's a problem with your husband. Instead of going out and cheating, I would like you to know that when a woman cheats, she's not like a man. You will go one time and saying that you are just playing, but you will find yourself uh, with that man, you will find yourself being attached to him and will not be able to come back again to your husband. Why not speak to your husband and dialogue and try and fix things? I believe that there's no problem at home that cannot be arranged so you should take care of your home no matter the difficulties avoid those type of things because it is dangerous even for your children now you have a children who are often you think that what you did is good today but tomorrow you are going to regret it don't cheat as a woman now concerning that man 
he should know that if they do investigation and discover that he is the one who pushed that ma that woman to kill the husband he will go to prison that's what he have to know so i advise to men don't go and 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 look looking for don't go out looking for women who are already married there are many women out there why don't get your own wife and leave that type of woman alone because very soon now maybe you will go to prison for nothing and your life will be just like that your life will be finished oh my so god well thank you so see. much counselor caroline <laughs> kwam for that beautiful advice there uh, a, a word to a wise is sufficient. To be forewarned is to be forearmed, you understand? And you know also marriage is for better or for worse. Please, when you are doing that, I do so swear. Know that it is for better or for worse. Time is against us. That's when you are sending your text messages. We still welcome them. We are grateful. This one says, I will advise her to let God take vengeance. Uh, Rachel from Baneng Banengu. Okay, Rachel from Banengo is saying that uh, vengeance is of God, is of God and not of a um, man. That's the advice. Thank you so much, Rachel from Banengo. And we had another text message here. It says, um, okay, oh my God. It says, I will advise her not to bother. Let her allow God to take vengeance. I will advise her to let God take vengeance. Rachel from Banengo. And this other one says, this other person did not sign in. Says I will advise her not to bother. Let her allow God to take vengeance. Thank you so much for your messages. We want to say we are very grateful. Oh my God. Okay. Those are for those who had difficulties in calling. When you have difficulties, what you do? You just text like what Rachel has done. Rachel from Banenko. We are so grateful. And the other person who wrote never to sign in some other time. We want to say we are very grateful for all those who took time off to be a part of the program. Counseling Caroline Kwam, thank you so much for taking the rendezvous. You can see we are pining our files. From this angle, we want to say have a splendid weekend and stay out of troubles. And don't go for women, uh, for people's wives, not people's husbands. Stay out of trouble. Love your wife, love your husband. Sure, you will meet Counselor Caroline Kwam some other time again on the platform. Keep watching other programs on NG Television and take the rendezvous next Saturday. We will, we will be right here for you all. One love from this plateau. Have a blessed weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. I'm seeing you, sir.